Now, as you know, you can use delta G standard to calculate the value of the standard cell potential, or you could just as well uh, use standard reduction potentials and look up the cathode potential and the anode potential, and from those you can get the standard reduction potential, and from those you can calculate your standard cell potential. But this doesn't give you the potential for your actual cell. The actual potential for your cell is going to depend on the concentrations of reactant and product. Okay, for the gases, it's going to depend on the partial pressures of the gases involved in the oxidation and reduction reactions. So how do you get back and forth between the standard cell potential and the actual cell potential of your specific cell? Well, for that, we need the Nernst equation. And we're going to derive it. It's a very, very quick derivation because it's actually an equation you already know, just put into an electrochemical format. So we'll start with what we know. We know that if we want to know the actual delta G for a reaction, we can take our standard delta G and just add RT log of Q, our reaction quotient. So the concentrations of reactants and products are what compose this, and that's going to change the value of our delta G standard to give us our actual delta G. Well, we can turn this reaction into, we can turn this equation into an electrochemical format by remembering that delta G standard is equal to negative NF times E standard. And just as we can do this for standard cell potentials, we can do this for non-standard cell potentials. We can go back and forth between the energy world and the voltage world just by using Faraday's constant and the number of electrons, moles of electrons transferred. Okay, so once we have this, we can just make these substitutions in here and in here and rewrite this equation in terms of voltages. So negative NFE is equal to negative NFE standard plus RT log of Q. And then we can just divide both sides by negative NF. We get E is equal to E standard minus RT over NF log of Q. So let's use this. This is the Nernst equation. And let's use it to calculate the potential of a cell. Let's do that on the next slide. OK, so in this cell, we have an anode where zinc electrode is being oxidized to zinc to chloride. And then we have a uh, cathode where silver chloride solid is being reduced to simply silver. OK, so we have this, and we can find using either a standard cell potential table, or we could use uh, we could use the delta G standard for the various for the reaction here to calculate uh, E standard. But in any case, E standard for this cell. So to write out our expression for Q, we need to write out our balanced equation. So we've got zinc solid. We've got silver chloride solid, and the silver chloride is being reduced to silver solid, and the zinc is being oxidized to zinc chloride. OK, and that's aqueous. We better balance this. There's two chlorides. We need two chlorides there. That means we need two silvers here. We double check by looking at oxidation numbers. Zinc is going from zinc 0 to zinc 2 which means that we're losing two electrons on the zinc. We have to gain two on the other half reaction. And since silver is going from silver one to silver zero, and there's two silver atoms, that'll work out. We're transferring two electrons overall. In fact, let's write that down now, that N is equal to two. All right, now that's our right expression for Q. Q is equal to products over reactants. And so we have our concentration of zinc chloride 
and that is, I'll just write this out as concentration of zinc chloride. We have that number, it's two molar. And then we have to look at our other product. Oh wait, this is a pure solid, it has activity of one. So we're just multiplying by one, we just won't bother showing that. And then we divide by the concentration of reactants. Oh, this is a pure solid. So we've got another one down here on the bottom. Oh, a pure solid, another one. So we don't bother writing any of those. In fact, Q is just equal to the concentration of zinc chloride. So we can see Q is going to be equal to 0.2 molar. Okay, so it's 0.2 molar divided by the standard concentration of one molar, so 0.2. Very good. So we're ready to use our Nernst equation. So E is equal to E standard minus RT and F log of Q. We have all those numbers. E standard is 0.98 volts. And we have uh, 8.314 joules per mole per Kelvin. We've got a temperature of 298 Kelvins. I didn't state that earlier, but you do need the temperature as well. We've got the log of Q, which is a log of 0.2. And we divide by 2 because we have two electrons being transferred for every one of these. And then we, we divide by Faraday's constant, 96,485 coulombs per mole. And then we check our units. We've got reciprocal moles, reciprocal moles. We've got kelvins and kelvins. So we've got joules per kelvin, uh, joules per, per coulomb, which is a volt. So we've got volts here, volts there. It's going to give us volts. That's what we want. We also check to see if this makes sense conceptually. Notice that our concentration of our product, zinc chloride, is less than one molar. It's less than the standard concentration. So we have a low concentration of product that should drag this reaction to the right. Maybe I'll draw a little arrow and it's going to drag it to the right. In other words, we should expect E to be greater than E standard. Will that happen? Let's look at our number. This is less than one. So this log is going to be negative. We have a negative sign here. So a negative times a negative gives us a positive. This term is going to be positive. It's going to make this number bigger, which is we, what we said should happen because of the low concentration of product. So we should get a number greater than 0.98. So we plug all these numbers in. OK, so we plug all those numbers in. And we, so we plug all those numbers in. And we get that E is equal to 1.0 volts. So indeed, it was greater than our standard cell potential because of this low concentration. And that's how you use the Nernst equation.